Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Speak, Film, and Enter, a podcast where we review and rank movies. I'm Nate. That is what we do. <laughs> it <laughs> sounded <laughs> wrong when I was saying it out loud. I was like, <laughs> yeah. is that a, a word felt wrong there? I think nope. it was right. Let's just keep it going. It's the brief hiatus. <laughs> it, it ruined us. It did. Yeah. I'm just all out of whack. So we'll start that again with the names, at least. I'm Nate. And I'm Dylan. And I'm Adam. We were also thrown off by the, it wouldn't record at first. It sort of spun and aired out on me. And then usually it takes like two seconds for it to actually start after I hit the button. So mm -hmm. then the second time I was expecting it to take a while, but it started immediately. <laughs> and so Same. after not working and then it didn't even buffer or anything the second time. So I, I got thrown off a little bit and we mm -hmm. haven't been doing as many episodes recently. So a little bit of rust. Yep. Which hopefully we can move past here. Mm -hmm. uh, today, we've got movie club number 11. 11. According to the two of you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, ch I choose to trust that. You're probably both <laughs> right. I don't know why I thought it was 12. I have no evidence that it was supposed to be 12. But here we are. It's movie yeah. club number 11. And for this episode, we are reviewing Bound, the yes. directorial debut from the, is it Wachowski? How do you pronounce mm -hmm. yes. that? Yes. The Wachowski sisters. Mm -hmm. So I had never heard of this movie until about a week and a half ago. Mm. And it showed up on Criterion and it's leaving at the end of the month. And I thought, this sounds great. Have mm -hmm. you guys seen this? You both said no. I thought, all right, let's watch it right now and review it tomorrow, basically, which mm -hmm. is pretty much what we did. So yeah. Adam, before we get any farther along would you like to tell the people what bound is about indeed tough ex-con corky and her lover violet concoct a scheme to steal millions of stashed mob money and pin the blame on violet's crooked boyfriend caesar all right yes, indeed and uh yeah like you said nada uh, you know the scarcity the, this movie was very hard to find for a long time so we had to strike while the iron was hot and uh, then if you're listening and you do have Criterion, you can catch it before it leaves again. But uh, The Matrix is my favorite movie of all time. So I've known about this movie for a long time. Just it's been on the watch list and just never got around to it. And it never popped up anywhere for streaming. So very easy to just, you know, forget that it exists for a while and then be like, oh, yeah, this one. Um, so I was really excited when uh, you said, hey, you know, it's there. I want to do it. I'm interested. Let's let's make this the next movie club. So this is a, I'm, I'm glad that we went this route. Yeah, it was fun to watch. Adam and I got to watch it together, which mm -hmm. I think we both appreciated because this is a tense movie. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Dylan, I pictured you just kind of like circling your coffee table. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, I, that was pretty much it. Yeah, I watched it. I watched it the same night as you guys, but later I started at around nine. But definitely, you know, I was tired when I started, but I was 100 percent awake while I was watching it because, yeah, the tension and the the slow build, the stakes just kind of get bigger and bigger. Um yeah, it really it really pulled me in and uh, basically right away, and uh, and kept my attention. Yeah, so really quick before we get any farther uh, with the movie club reviews, we just basically pick something old that's not brand new that we're all interested in. This fits that really well, I think. Kind of a mm -hmm. debut from the directors of The Matrix back from the mm -hmm. '90s, and we will do a non-spoiler discussion at the beginning, which will keep a little bit shorter, but pretty similar to our usual reviews. Then we'll get into the stars. And then in the second half, we'll discuss spoilers for those of you who have seen the movie and or just want to stick around for that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I think it's pretty safe to just start off by saying all of us really like this movie. That's yeah. the vibe I've gotten. Mm -hmm. uh, it had been so I really like crime movies, but I've gone through a lot of them. And it's been a while, I feel like, since I found one that was new to me that just grabbed me yeah, and reminded me of why I love a good crime slash mob movie so much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's just thrilling. And when you get characters that you really like, there's a sense of danger throughout every scene, essentially. Like once the plot kind of kicks in, mm -hmm. it's just nobody's safe. You don't really know where it's going to go. This had mm -hmm. a kind of like Hitchcock thriller vibe to me where he, he'll kind of like he has this one premise 
Yeah. And then that's just kind of what happens. And he just milks it for everything it's worth. Yeah. Yeah. And it just kind of goes, you, you know, you sometimes you'll get movies that are a little more, I don't want to say this isn't like plot heavy because it, it is the plots an integral part of why this movie works, mm -hmm. but there aren't a ton of characters yeah. And not as many as you'd expect in something where the premise is like two people try to rip off the mob. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. basically like three main characters and then like two, like three other important ones who pop in for who a pop in. But most of the movie also takes place in just like these two different apartments that are right next to each other. Yeah. And it's it's smaller scale, which is why it kind of reminded me of some Hitchcock stuff like Psycho or Dial M for Murder or mm -hmm. Rear Window, mm -hmm. where you're just kind of in this little place. Mm -hmm. And sure. and it's so much more thrilling and feels so much bigger than something with such a small setting and small cast of characters. And I, I don't know. I really love this. Uh, it it definitely grabbed me all the way through. Yeah, to me, uh, it felt like a throwback in a lot of different ways. It felt yep. like a throwback to, like you were just saying, the Hitchcockian kind of murder or crime kind of setup, you know, and, and also even like it felt very noirish as well. Mm -hmm. There were strong elements of noir, especially with their, you know, relationship between the two main characters. I mean, it is a like steamy passionate affair and it's and like it's it, you know in in the 40s or 50s it would have been right the detective and the shady lady who have a passionate affair and then he gets shady tied lady. up but this was like a modern take on it this was like a mid 90s it's cool too because it's the movie is very 90s while feeling like a throwback and like an homage to like earlier films like the the clothes they're wearing the music they're listening to like it is very very 90s but it, it, it somehow it blends those two things. It takes kind of these classic elements. And like you said, Nate, very stripped down, not no extra stuff. Very few scenes that take place, like you said, outside of like the apartment building. Um, but um, it, it's all, it also feels kind of uh, modernized or freshened up a little bit for the time. Um, and I liked seeing some things that I felt like were kind of um, a precursor or like a, a foreshadowing of what they would do in the matrix. There were certain camera angles and like cinem cinematography choices they would make. And sure. even a couple times with the music, there was one point where like they brought in those horns that they use a lot in the matrix. There was one point where they kind of brought the bugle or whatever that is that yeah, like, and they used it. And I was like, ah, so they were already playing around with that. So that was fun for me. There were just a couple moments, not too many, but a couple moments where I was like, okay, I can see the through line here from this to the to the matrix to you know whatever they would make after how about you yeah. adam i mean this came out in 96 so this was i think they're three years right before three years before like, this is right before um, i don't know if they might have had one or one in between but I it can was look. This was like their debut and then obviously the matrix was there was their big hit yeah um I'm, I'm taking a look right now to see if i can find uh, no it looks like they went bound and then right into the matrix Wow. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of similar things. There was a couple of transitions in this movie that were really, really interesting. Um, there's one where it, it like it shows it's like a white background and it fades. Maybe it's the paint um, uh, it, later on, uh, but it just fades straight into something else. I was like, oh, that was really cool. And it was like a, you know, a two second transition from scene to scene. It just gets you where you need to go. Um, there's a I, lot of interesting stuff in this movie like that. I like yeah. the transition from toilet to toilet. Did you guys notice that one? <laughs> I think I, I think I, I think I did. Yeah. So, is it kind of earlier in the movie? Um, it's kind of yeah. It's earlier in the movie when uh, mm -hmm. I mean, no spoilers here, but the the mob guy next door is beating somebody up in the bathroom. Oh yeah. yeah. And yeah. so it's like one toilet, and then it takes us to the other apartment by just like kind of like the bowl changes slightly, and you yeah. see like blood drip in. A, a lot of um, aerial looking down shots that go from one apartment to the next, like through yep. the wall. And mm -hmm. that they definitely did that in the matrix. And even some certain shots where just like where the tension was very high, just the kind of pacing and the way that they filmed, like, Oh God, like shit's about to go down. Like that felt like yeah. in the, right at the beginning of a lot of uh, matrix kind of set pieces. They usually have that moment where it's like, Oh, 
and then the, like, and this then is gonna matter happened. you gotta pay attention this is gonna matter yeah they did a really yeah. good job in this movie with that uh, obviously that carries over to the matrix but there was there was times in this movie where nate and i looked at each other and we're just like how are they gonna get out of this like what's gonna happen it was just it was very very like i like throw your hands up like oh like i'm, I'm worried now i'm worried for this character how's it gonna go down so should we touch on the performances since i mean yeah this movie basically is carried by three three actors yeah i did want to just jump off one thing where you mentioned how it it does like stylistically it feels very 90s it reminded me at times of like memento or mulholland drive it reminded me a lot of um wild at heart the Lynch sure movie. i still haven't seen that yet i need yeah. to <laughs> uh it reminded me of those but also just it still felt fresh like other than the visuals which very much tie the and like the the costumes and everything like stylistically mm -hmm. this is very much a 90s movie but you could drop this today if this came yeah. out yesterday and i watched it i would have just said like oh wow this is a super fresh take on the noir mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. movie's what 27 years old yeah yeah so mm -hmm. I, I thought that was really impressive so i just did want to mention that before we kind of move on to the performances which yeah we have in the the two women, Jennifer Tilly and Gina Gershon. And then just one of my favorite, like of that era character actors, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Pantoliano. Yes. Who, who they reuse in the matrix. Yeah. The matrix as mm -hmm. so Adam and I noticed this. He's what's his character's name in the matrix. He's a uh, cipher. cipher cipher, which I believe starts with a C. It does. Yeah. And in C this movie, he plays Caesar, and in The Fugitive, he plays Cosmo, which are all Ooh. just names that start with C's that are a little offbeat. Well, they're weird. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just thought that was kind of an interesting through. So, Adam, like, if you didn't have enough reasons to watch The Fugitive now, mm -hmm. yeah. You got to complete the trilogy for this guy for the his Pantoliano, yeah. <laughs> the Pantoliano <Yes>. C trilogy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, I thought, um, I mean, from the beginning, you know, Tilly and Gershon definitely have uh, chemistry and they are like, basically they, they meet pretty early on and they really play into like the attraction and just kind of like, and I mean, like they really sold that. And it's interesting that they give you so much that at the beginning, because then I was thinking like, okay, like what's, where are we going to go from here? You know, because is it like, okay, I, I get kind of the setup now, but like, what's the, like, how are these characters, you know, are these characters going to show me more than just what I'm seeing now? And then like, once they hatch the plan and go for it, I felt like they each kind of brought like extra like layers to kind of their characters as the movie went on, which I appreciated. And then Pat Tilliano, I felt like the last like act, like the last hour, he was just stealing every scene. Like he, he really committed. I felt like down the stretch and it, it worked like he was a believable, formidable, like, uh, you know, um, antagonist. And I just thought that those three played off each other really, really well, basically well, the whole movie the more manic and and scared he gets the deeper in that he gets the the just crazier he becomes like obviously he's completely desperate like he knows what's about to happen to him yeah. he's been doing this to people and, for a while like we can, yeah he knows we'll, we'll how, about, how this operates yeah we'll talk like about that more in the spoiler part of it but yeah but he, he he just gets so desperate and that's that's the father of him just really stealing everything else because he he's allowed to do so much yeah, it, it, basically, he's a character who's used to being in control. And mm -hmm. when that goes away, he just slowly becomes more and more unhinged. And I think he does a really good job of portraying that. Uh, Jennifer Tilly really steals this for me. It's mm -hmm. those two. I really felt like my, kind of my one issue with the movie was I felt like the second half, Gina Gershon didn't really have that much to do. Yep. She kind of becomes a side character for a while there, just kind of the way that the plot unfolds. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that works in the sense that they kind of play with your expectations a little bit on what Jennifer Tilly's character becomes capable of doing, yeah. which is really fun. Like that's why like the interplay between Jennifer Tilly and Joe Pantoliano is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of felt like she felt like a third wheel for more of this than I would have liked mm -hmm. kind of my only issue really. I mean, she's good when 
it's kind of focused on her, but then she's just sort of not there for a while. And I did find that a little disappointing, mm-hmm. but I mean, they're mm-hmm. all really, really good. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I think that, um, that in the third act she does, she definitely gets less screen time or just when she's on screen, she has less dynamic things to do, um, mm-hmm. which is too bad. But, you know, I also feel like, like you said, they, they all did a great job, but yeah, I agree. Jennifer Tilly, I feel like I, I hadn't really seen her in much or like known kind of why she was a big deal. And I felt like she really was fantastic in this. Agreed. Should we get into the stars? Um, yeah, let's do it. All right. We will be right back. Okay. Do we even need to go one by one here? I feel like we're all in full agreement. We can just go right through. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. One after another. So, I mean, I am giving this four stars. Dylan, you also, I believe. I'm giving it four stars. Are giving this four stars. And Adam? I am giving it four stars. All right. There we go. All agreed. It's a great movie. Yes. I, I think. You know, we watch a lot of movies together, so naturally we're going to, our tastes are going to, and opinions are going to kind of go towards each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, but a lot of times we'll see like a four, a three and a half and a four, a four, a four and a half and a four. I thought one of of you might go four and a half. Same. I thought you Mm -hmm. would. I was expecting you to come in here with like, uh, this is almost as good as the Matrix (laughs) energy. (laughs) Which... Maybe you'll get there one day. I might. I, don't know. I mean, I, I definitely this movie, even though it took me so long to watch, it's it's on the it's high on the rewatch list. I feel like, like mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell people about this, and if they're willing to watch it, and I can find it or I can get it, like I would definitely rewatch this. Yeah, for sure. And this is a movie that I feel like I can recommend to basically anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like mm-hmm. a solid, tight, like well acted crime thriller it that's up like everybody's wheelhouse essentially yeah yeah so yeah. i mean yeah we all think this is pretty great if you couldn't tell already mm-hmm. adam you got anything or should we just dive right into the spoiler just discussion in. just dive in i should say at this point we usually announce what our next movie club pick is going to be we don't know what that will be yet mostly because Still we don't mystery. know when that will be mm-hmm. so we'll try to get that announced soon and hopefully before the next episode whereas with this one we kind of just sprung it on people which mm-hmm. is okay but we like to at least give people a bit of a heads up on uh what that's going to be but we don't have that yet so getting into the spoiler discussion i loved the visuals of the ending scene mm. i didn't necessarily lo- i did feel like the ending was slightly anticlimactic uh, me too just yeah. a tiny bit yeah not a lot but just a little it felt like it could have been drawn out like a little bit more or like some kind of surprise mm-hmm. or something it all played out very in a very straightforward way but having him standing on that white paint like yeah. that was just brilliant yeah, yeah it was cool yeah <laughs> i was I, I i like that a lot i felt like the whole I feel like it did a really good job of the plan is simple and yet it goes awry for very believable reasons. Yeah. Like that's what I love the most is that it it, it felt like so believable that, yeah, like on the surface, if it seems kind of simple and if you can just trick him for like a brief period, then you guys are out of there and you're gone. And it's like, yeah. And And then you see how in real life, the variable that you can't account for. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that point because there are so many times in movies where part of a plan hinges on character A reacting a certain way and doing a certain thing. And mm-hmm. sometimes that feels a little too predictable or a little too easy. And mm-hmm. in this movie, they got it like 80% right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. He believed it enough, but then he kind of flipped it where he wasn't ready to just run yet. Yep. That was where Mm -hmm. he had a little more in him, a little more fight in him, I think, than they were expecting. Yeah. And I really, really like that. And that's kind of the point I was trying to get to earlier. I think I got a little sidetracked where how like this isn't something like The Departed 
Mm -hmm. with like tons of wheels spinning and like a, like lots of different locations and kind of cause and effect like the plot. exactly yeah it's it's literally just like a, they tried this thing <laughs> and then it kind of didn't work and the rest of it is just like the next several hours as it plays out and becomes more and more chaotic yeah <laughs> yeah and you truly don't know how it's going to end like mm -hmm. they really they you know they have it because they they show you at the beginning that she's tied up so you're like okay at some point it doesn't go completely according to plan. Yeah, then, like, like we know it out. has to end a certain way. How do we get from A to B or A to mm -hmm. C rather? Like what what's what part of B is the part that doesn't work? Yeah, uh, that was really interesting. That's what causes so much tension, and because of you know you've got you've got some dead bodies in the bathtub, and you're like, <laughs> all right, like clearly some shit has has happened. Like we need to we need to pick it up. Like we we got to make the moves. If we, yeah, the if we're gonna get if we're gonna get out of here, like we gotta. We got to make some moves like something's got to we got to change things up and, and fix it. The it tension, the tension when the mob bosses get there and you know that Pantaleano is about to confront them with a total lie. Yeah, he not know is a lie, but he is about to like confront slash probably kill these dudes because of a lie that you planted in his head. And all you want to do is just get the fuck out of that room. Like the tension was so like every word, like I was so glued to the screen. I was just like, Oh my God, what is going to happen? And then the absolutely brilliant um, phone ringing. Uh, I was going to ask, did you guys think they made good enough use of the thin walls? Like where, yeah. cause they set that up immediately and you know, it's going to come back at some point. Do you mm -hmm. think it took full advantage of that? Too much, not enough? Like, where where do you think that felt? Because the phone itself, I thought, was great. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was great. Um, I thought they did a pretty good job. It never really directly came into play like it did with the phone, but it felt like, you know, when when they would say, like, like the, when they were interrogating that guy and beating him up, like, you could hear his screams, like, in different rooms, and, like, it, it did a good job of kind of the idea of like if something happens, like you usually heard it in the background or heard it nearby. So it felt like everyone had to be quiet or at least like, I felt like it did a good job of doing that. To your point, it, it only used it as like a true like device. I felt like once with the phone. Yeah. I, I felt like maybe there was an opportunity to use that to give um, Corky something else to do. At some point, mm. I can't say I know or really have an idea of what I think that would be. And maybe it would have felt like overkill at that point. Um, but it did feel like maybe it's just because it came later than I thought it would with with the thin walls. Because she's over there for so long and then all these people show up and we don't really get a lot from her perspective mm, on yeah. hearing like just kind of like the rustling over there and how like they're just still hanging out and like what's going on. Yeah, she hears like the gunshots, but that's like obvious. right. But. It, it, I felt like we could have spent a little more time of her it, just even like trying to hear what's happening mm -hmm. or something yeah. like like one of them trying to use the thin walls to their advantage rather than just kind of like forgetting about it and then being like, oh, shit, the phone's ringing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, she could have overheard like, some of the conversation or something between like when the uh, when the boss gets there and all that stuff, if she could have overheard or like just heard like, oh, there's more voices in the room. Like now, right. What? You know, it, exactly. Yeah. Those lines. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's just um, a little thing. I, I think mm -hmm. I realized as he was like dialing, I think I was like, oh, shit, the phone's going to ring and he's going to hear it through. The like that was just a cool moment where it's hard to pull off when you know something is going to happen, but it's still like you get anxious about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. definitely nails that feeling. Well, and, and yeah, and she doesn't re realize that that's what's going to happen right away because she like it rings she like hangs up and then it rings again and she's like she steps away and she's like oh shit and then like and then dives into it and it's like now you know like now things have gone awry for both of you and you're both aware of it and now the whole thing has been blown up that's yeah, something and I, that, like, and I, that's a very easy way to do that a very effective way to do that yeah and i like too that she wasn't like on top of it right away with the thin mm -hmm. walls we're like there's so much other stressful like life and death stuff going on right now that I, I do like that they, they treated it like that would not be the first thing yeah. on her mind. There's that enough like gray area. I better unplug this phone because he might be calling me <laughs> and then like he'll that, be able it, to hear. Yeah. Right. Like that would, I, I think 
that just felt very realistic. There's the way it was shot and kind of the way the characters reacted to everything. I thought it worked really well. And and like when uh, when he first you know when he discovers that the money's missing and he just like forces he like he like you said he doesn't want to run. I love how it's like the thing they couldn't predict is just like you know a, a man's ego and his emotions, which is like very believable, right? It's not like they messed up on like the time of day that the mail gets there or something. It was it was like <laughs> yeah, it's, like it was just like, it's the X factor of people being people, and you really never can know how they're gonna react. And yep. then, um, but when he's like, oh yeah, I'm going to go and search this place and you're coming too. And it's just, and then she has to go. And then like, they leave because like that, that felt very believable too. Like that. It was just like, oh no, like he's going to drag you around now because like, he doesn't trust you. And like already things aren't going awry, like or things aren't going the way you thought they were going to go. And then, yeah. they're just, you know, they're standing in the other guy's apartment and she's just standing there because she knows he's not going to find it and he's just losing his shit completely tearing up this apartment like that was oh a good cut God. i like that they brought us there when it was like he had already destroyed the place yeah we didn't and need then, to see all of it and then i love that we had the initial tension and like then he kills the mob boss but then we have the other phase two of the tension which is the attempted cover-up and the attempted like okay yeah tell him that they never showed up He'll come to my house. By that time, I'll have the money. I'll say, see, here's the money. And then we'll like that whole thing. Because then it's like Pantoliano and Jennifer Tilly are plotting together, even though you know that only one of them really want like just a lot of dynamics there. It just felt like things. That's were like the second. Yeah, that's the, the second place. level. That's yeah. The second yeah. Level planning, which is cool. Yeah. Like, and that was really cool. And, you know, the guy. Uh, who, yeah. Mickey. Mickey who comes in and just like, oh, my God. Caesar's just lying through his teeth. Also, Christopher Maloney as Johnny Marzone from, uh, you know, Law and Order SVU and all that. Good for him to pop up in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he did a I good think, job. I think what makes this movie uh, so fresh is because they took the time to treat everybody as if they were their own character. They took time. Like, everything happens realistically. We don't have a lot of contrivances in this movie. Like, oh, this had to happen. So, like, this thing just kind of happens. Like, yes, it's I so it's so believable. A hundred percent. Every like nobody's dumb. I mean, John yeah. is like a little dumb, but that doesn't turn out to be his the downfall. reason why anything really happens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's why one character doesn't like him. Yeah. And they Which play off that a little bit, but he doesn't like nobody makes a really stupid decision. Which benefits somebody else. It's just all yeah. kind of they're working with what they got. And it's a lot of emotion based choices. Mm -hmm. But like you guys have said, they all make sense. And I do think that makes this an effective. And I would think I haven't watched it a second time yet, but a very rewatchable thriller. Yeah. yeah. When you say emotion, too, I love that this movie plays on the emotions of the men in this movie because mm -hmm. it is it's helmed by a, a lesbian couple and like normally you would think with gender stereotypes that like the women are going to be the emotional like don't have their shit together ones. like the unpredictable ones and yeah. it's completely flipped on its head they have they have their plan and they are sticking to it and they trust each other completely and then the mm -hmm. men are the one that fly off the handle and end up shooting somebody and, and panic and all of that stuff and that's what's so fun too and the whole yeah. plot hinges on the you know these two guys not liking each other this kind of thing <laughs> This catty <laughs> bullshit <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> these guys. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Um, yeah. Do you think, do you think, um, you know, when Pantoliano uh, shoots Gino Marzon, do you think that Gino, do you think he had to at that point? Like, do you think that Gino, the mob boss would have just killed him? Or do you think that maybe he had a chance to give over the gun? And I think he kind of had to, him. I mean, the money wasn't there and he just pointed a gun at his kid. What else is he going to do? He, maybe he can get away with killing his, his, the son. Maybe like, because he can like fully flesh out like, Hey, he stole this from me to put me in a bad light to, to get you to fuck me. But I <laughs> fucked him first. Like I could kind of see it. Maybe he'll get beat up or something, but like, well, as soon as he points the gun at Gino, it's like, oh, well, it's over. Doesn't matter. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I felt like I felt like in that moment, his character Caesar like realized that like I can't give the gun to this guy. I can't like I've gone way too far. And then yeah, it's just like, okay, it's boom, over. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, yeah. Um, all around, just a really well written, tight script, great crime story, like stripped down, but great characters. Um, yeah, uh, the the chemistry between uh, our two the two leads was fantastic. Um, I, yeah, I would highly recommend this to pretty much anybody. Honestly, agreed, 
It's um, understandable why this was the precursor to get the the studios to be like, yeah, you can have the Matrix now. Like you can you can you wrote that, just go do it. We, we trust you. Yeah, like this these directors, but with a cr crazy sci-fi you know setup. Mm -hmm. um, I was also gonna say too, we were talking about movies this would uh, pair well with or whatever. I think this would make a great pairing with Blood Simple, the Coen Brothers' first movie. I was thinking of that actually. That that felt a lot. You could also go in the other direction and pair it with like The Handmaiden. Oh yeah, I suppose <laughs> if you wanted to, but Blood Simple would make a either of those. You could go either way, I think, and have a great double feature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just I think we. Uh, I'm gonna add this to the list of just like really good '90s crime movies, which is a pretty esteemed list and has a lot of five <laughs> stars on there. But I think this has earned its place. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, is there anything else that uh, you all wanted to touch on? That's it for me. All right. Well, normally we would announce the next week's uh, movie club, but we do not know that for sure. So just stay tuned. And whose turn is it to put a wrap on the show? It would be mine. All right. Take it away, Nate. You can't believe what you see, but you can believe what you feel.